Welcome back to Cigar Time, your Tuesday night show, everything to do with cigars. And we have a wonderful panel assembled. Kind of looks like the same crew from last week. Yeah. I think we are. Uh, I'm even wearing the same underwear. Right? <laughs> same hat. That's a little too much information. We have our... We <laughs> it's have a lot to, too much. To my left, that you cannot see, but unfortunately we can, we have our mystery smoker. To my right, we have Rob. Hi, everybody. To his right, we have uh, Paul. Hello. He's going to be in the factory today, or in a, some country, I'm not sure country. where. To his He's right, we have Scott. Hello. To his right, we have the lovely Miss T. Hi. And uh, today for our first cigar, we're smoking the Eduardo Edition Especial. This is That's one correct. of our series of Eduardo cigars, and uh, my esteemed colleague, Rob, will tell you all about it. This is a Dominican Puro. It has a Dominican filler, binder, and wrapper. Very smooth cigar. It's the one that has the black and silver band it's on right it. right here. Yeah. Black, nice and black, black and silver. Black and silver. silver. Sort of the Here's the black and silver band. Yep. Okay. And uh, our, uh, well, let's get some comments about this cigar. Mystery Smoker, start it out. Well, I think this is the mildest of the Eduardo blends. It's a very good. It's got, it's got a nice, smooth flavor. It's a, it's a little uh, sweet, and it's a very good, mild, beginning-of-the-day cigar. I, I like this cigar. I'm almost afraid to ask. <laughs> oh, no, I like this cigar. Oh, I agree with you. <laughs> wow. wow. No, it has a really nice taste, maybe because it is a Dominican Puro. I'm not sure. Um, I agree with everything the Mystery Smoker said. It's a good cigar. Love the band. Very <laughs> nice, sexy band. Um, and the construction is good. It's a good. It's a good cigar. Now I just want to. I just want to stop there one second. Paul, would you please tell the lovely Miss Tia what kind of wrappers on this? I don't know. It looks <laughs> like an Ecuadorian <laughs> Connecticut, yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. which well, makes. What I mean. It's a, it's a Dominican wrapper. Connecticut. Dominican. No, it's, it's a Dominican, it's a Dominican Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. It's a Dominican Connecticut. That's where. It's a Connecticut wrapper. Dominican Ecuadorian Connecticut. No. I don't know. It's, it's just something all. different. It just it's doesn't taste Ecuadorian like a regular Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay, okay. I yeah. just wanted you to know that you're smoking. You know, I don't like Connecticut, but I like. I this know. Thing. I tried. You see how it's that's different why cigars it have a different flavor. You know. Yep. You, you know. That's why there's vanilla and chocolate. Well, it's, okay. And that makes I this a like very un, the fact a that bit. it has a, a Dominican Connecticut wrapper yeah. makes very it very unusual. unusual. Thank you. Yeah. That makes sense because I I get some unusual. Flavors, like flavors mm -hmm. you don't normally get on a cigar yeah. from this. Mm -hmm. you definitely get a uh, aroma and some flavors of tea. Um, not this. <laughs> uh, like a black You tea. only hear it here. Like oh. a black oh, tea. Like, what are you <laughs> <doing>? <laughs> yeah, jump right out of that. Pico. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, also, some a little bit of hint of clove and uh, some spice at the beginning. It's uh, unusual flavor, something I don't find in any other cigars. Really enjoyable. That's flavor. why we make them. I'm sweating now. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> Black tea. By the way, oh, this, is made, this is made in our factory in uh, Santiago in the Dominican Republic. Paul? Yep. Uh, it is extremely mild, but it does have flavor, and it burns beautifully. Yeah. It does. Look at the ash. Rob? Ash. Um, I like the cigar. It's very good. I usually don't like uh, Dominican puros. Uh, like Paul was saying, Dominican is not known for its wrappers. But uh, this is especially a, Connecticut, right? Especially Connecticut yeah. wrappers. But this one's very good. That's why I brought it, has a lot, it up. Has a lot of taste to it. I like it. It does. It's a great cigar. When you filter in the fact that it's four dollars and fifty cents, it's a Absolutely. wonderful cigar. So let's rate it, shall we, Mystery Man? I give it a four and a half. Miss T. Four and a half. I give it a four. Four. Uh, four and a half. Absolutely. I give it a four and a half, which makes it a four three seven five. Wow. Nice, nice, nice. Four fifty, four dollars and fifty cents. Sports fan. Do we make Except these in Gordos? In New Jersey. Uh, yeah, oh, yes, we do. Betting yeah. store doesn't have any of these. Well, just we'll just, just sure gotta point them. that out to it's you. It's hard to keep certain sizes in stock. <laughs> these things sell so darn fast. I didn't want to say damn, so I said okay. darn. Okay, you said damn. Oh, I did. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Somebody did. I think uh, it's time for us to. Uh, Introduce our first second cigar. cigar. Do we really oh, have to put this one out, cigar. though? Second cigar. I know. I know. Yeah. I don't even want... No, no, no. We do want the Camacho. Okay, forget yeah. it. Yeah. All right. The lovely well, Miss Teresa will bring around our Camacho Corojo. Yes. Our fir our second cigar is a Camacho Corojo. Thank you. We'll take a few more puffs. And has a, it's a Honduran Puro with a Corojo wrapper. The sizes are a Bellicoso, Churchill, Corona, Gordo, Robusto, and a Toro. 
The flavor profile is sweet tobacco, nutmeg, and hints of raisinette and chocolate. No, no goobers? Ooh. Goobers. No goobers? To go with the raisinettes. You, what does the um, sweet tobacco mean? Well, there, there are breeds of tobacco that are very sweet, mm. and they give off a sweet taste, but it's not like a sugared taste. It's okay. like a tobacco taste mm. that's sweet. It's almost like chewing tobacco sweet. Look at yeah. this be and it covered. Now, this is something you got to take off. Look how big and Well, unless you only want to smoke it. I know, right? You got to take this. That's a beautiful band. They it really is. This whole, the this line, whole line, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the box is beautiful. The box in is very What's nice. the scorpion for? That's their new logo. Oh. And they're common in that well, part of What was their other one? Wasn't it like a bullhorn yeah, or something? Actually. They are. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't their funny. old one a bullhorn? Their old a bullhorn? No. The, the, their logo wasn't always scorpion, was no. it? No, only since they rebranded oh. and repackaged the whole line. The company is owned by Davidoff now. That is correct. Mm, let me taste this. So what's our first topic? Ooh. I'm lighting my cigar. Don't oh, be sorry. bothering me with topics. I'm got dead air. My God. What's the topic for today? Yeah. Well, I think we should discuss this. Um, we've never really discussed this. Why are certain cigars very rare and very difficult to get? And why do we limit them? And why do we limit them? We limit them so everybody can get one. I knew that answer. <laughs> That's all I know. No, no, no. Right kidding. on the ball there, too. <laughs> yeah. No, um, because don't they only make them certain times of the year? Isn't certain cigars, um, the way they make them, it's 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 rare. It's rare. Well, they don't have enough tobacco to yeah. make millions right. of them. Okay. Yeah. It's something they only make certain rewrites, like the the Añejo, They only make uh, well, they only just uh, distribute them one time a year, and you know, Opus X they distribute four times a year if you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky. Um, and yeah, we, we limit them. And I, I tell people, well, you know, why can I only get one of these? Because if I didn't limit them, they wouldn't be there right now. Right. Somebody yeah. Would, somebody would come in and they would buy all of them. The whole box. In yeah. a day. Yeah. That's true. I, th I think some cigars are rare because I think they create them to be rare. I was going to say that. I was going to ask you that. I think part of it is part of it is marketing. Mm -hmm. um, but the Opus X would be a good example. Of that. Yeah. Uh, it is. Yeah. The, well, well no, the Anejo the is rare for a different reason. Right. Yeah. Right. But. Still. And it has to do with a lot of tobaccos. I mean, they don't have an awful lot of the certain quality of tobacco, so they, they can only make X amount of cigars. That's true. And sometimes it has to do with the way they make the cigar, and the Anejo is actually a good example of that, in that that tobacco has to be aged in oak barrels for a long time before mm -hmm. they make the finished cigar. How long? Uh, I want to say seven years. Wow. Yeah. And you just don't have that much tobacco mm -hmm. at any given moment that's been sitting in a barrel for seven years. Well, well, to, I, got, I got a question about that. When we were talking about aging tobacco, it, didn't you say they were daily or weekly? Do you had to rotate them because they would overage or they get warm and they have to stop the process? That's and start fermentation. Over? Yeah. That's not aging. Well, Those are two different things. So what do they, when they age it, what do they do different? Keep it at a cooler temperature so they it doesn't do heat up? They do keep it cooler. They don't let it heat up. They don't add humidity to it to keep that process going. So when you're just aging the tobacco, you want it to be stable. You just want it to have time to develop. And if it develops in the presence of certain other flavors like oak, or and in their case, I believe they're cognac. They're cognac barrels? Sherry. So I thought it was sherry. Sherry barrels. Uh, even though sherry it doesn't cast. get tasted, it doesn't get the flavor of the sherry, it interacts with the sherry and the oak and that helps it develop a really unique, smooth, rich flavor. And uh, so that's why those are rare. Right. There are companies who just make rare cigars, like uh, La Flor Dominicana. Comes out with rare cigars all the time. Yeah, yeah. like the, the small batch. Small yeah, batch, small right, batch. exactly. Mm -hmm. As so. does General now. General's General starting now. to, yeah. Yeah, also exactly. certain brands yeah. has a very small batch. You've got like the Alec Bradley Fine Rare. Right. And that yeah. one's rare because they, I think it's 10 different tobaccos because into that cigar. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So they just, I mean, there's a limited amount, um, and they can only make so many because of right. the, the, the amount of tobacco that's Only so much tobacco, right. Right. Well, and I think some is just, you know, you get some that are just, you get higher quality tobacco. And then there are cigars that are rare because they stopped making them a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Which goes right into my uh, comments. Please I was surprised for everybody. <laughs> uh -oh. About 18 years ago, General Cigar, through its Partagas line, introduced the 150th 
to honor the 150th anniversary of Partagas. Uh, they used wrappers that at that point was 18 years old, and they made a very small quantity of these cigars, less than 10,000 of them. Uh, obviously, they sold out and have been gone off the marketplace for many, many years. The company recently, in the last few months, found a very small supply of them, less than a few thousand of them. And we were fortunate enough to obtain four beautiful humidors filled with 144 in three different sizes. Mm. These cigars are now 18 years old, the wrappers are 36 years old, and uh, the retail price may not be for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> or anyone. Sure. Well, no, we already have not, a few people. Not for me. We have four of these chests. We'll try to feature them on an upcoming show. But the chest contains three trays, uh, 144 total cigars, and three different presentations. And the retail price on this uh, beautiful humidor filled with these now 18-year-old cigars is $10,000. And uh, again, not for everybody. If you remember, you get a 10% discount. Yeah, well, if you remember. 10% <laughs> <right. laughs> discount. discount if you remember. <laughs> the, uh, hey, it's a thousand bucks. Not all our stores, will, we only have four of these chests. That's all we could obtain. We sort of cornered the market in them. And uh, we will maybe take them from store to store just so people can see what they look like. These cigars are, you know, the creme de la creme of cigars in this country. With the possible exception of some pre-embargo Cuban well, cigars, these are the rarest cigars yeah. there are. And most pre-embargoed, having smoked enough pre-embargo Cuban cigars, most, most pre-embargo Cuban cigars by now, the oils have pretty much evaporated and they're, they're not quite the same taste they were. They're very smooth, very mild. Some even old Cuban strong cigars are, are mild by today's standards. But these cigars, as I still have some of my own stash from the original supplies, are just breathtaking. Breathtaking. They, they, they are. You had I mean, it's, 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 it's an absolutely incredible cigar. I recall yeah. giving you one recently. Yeah, on, uh, yeah you lost a bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won yeah. a bet. Did you, did you smoke it yet? No. It's, that, that one you got to wait for a very special time, man. Yeah. He's not going to smoke that till his hair grows back. Uh, <laughs> what, on his head? <laughs> these, these cigars were recently <laughs> sold, when I say recently, a few years back were recently sold in the sizes that we have upwards of $75 to $125 a piece, if you could find them. Uh, one large mail order company in, in Florida had, had a small batch of those that they had been selling for a number of years at very high prices. And the rareness and the quality is just breathtaking, as I say. And uh, if you ever got a chance to stop by and see them, it's a treat to behold. The humidor itself is just a work of art. Yeah, it's it's awesome. gorgeous humidor. Does it have the Ramon and Ramones in it as well? No. No, no, no. just the 150s. That was part of the original okay. batch. It okay. came in those boxes that had the Ramones on one side and the 150s right. on the other yeah. side. I have one of those. But these cigars are, uh, let's put it this way, there were a lot of love put into these cigars. And the Coleman, the Coleman family, which owned General Cigar in those days when these, these were bought, you know, go back over 100 years in tobacco in this country. and. Uh, still today, own and control a lot of the uh, seed tobacco that's rolled for wrappers, uh, made it to wrappers in the Connecticut Valley in, in this country. So these are, these are cigar, let's put it this way, cigar masters extraordinaire that uh, have made these cigars. And uh, Benji Menendez, who will be retiring this year from General Cigar, I mean, uh, we may be doing an event with him in some of our stores just featuring these these boxes and I hope you all get a chance to uh, to see them and a few of you lucky ones will get a chance to buy them so Benji's an interesting guy mm -hmm. Benji is a very very interesting He's a cool guy. guy so yeah. I think it's time now for us to uh, go into the factory with Paul I'm, sure. I'm out in the country he's again. Country. Oh, you're out in the country? He's worldwide. Oh, you're in the country. And this, this week you're in Honduras I think. Yes I am. Well tell us all about it. Well g it, <laughs> interestingly Honduras has been a center of the tobacco industry since 1765. Wow. What happened back then is the king of Spain established the town of Santa Rosa as the clearinghouse for all tobacco trade on the mainland in the whole new world. Hmm. And so tobacco business has been going on there forever, virtually. Um, 
Aside from Santa Rosa, there are a couple of other areas in Honduras that grow some very good tobacco. One is the El Paraiso uh, province, which is where Dan Lee, the heart of the Honduran tobacco business, is. Um, near there is also the uh, Jamestown Valley, where they grow all kinds of wonderful tobaccos. And there's a, an area in central, uh, in central Honduras called the Talanga Valley that has its own very unique tobacco. And in fact, the tobacco there is so distinctive that they even grow it a different way. Uh, they use a method called encallado. Uh, and essentially, where most countries will put the cheesecloth tents over the fields to keep it out of the sun, there they grow it in the sun, but they put up the cheesecloth tents vertically because it's very windy in the Talanga Valley hmm. and it keeps the wind off the plants. Uh, it's the only place that they do that. Uh, the development of cigar companies in Honduras is a little different than it's been in the other countries for a couple of reasons. First of all, unlike the other countries, Honduras hasn't had any big revolutions or political upheaval until very recently, but they didn't have the kinds of uh, upheaval that you saw in Nicaragua or even the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Also, because it was originally established as a cigar center by the king, uh, the government has been supporting the cigar industry in, uh, in Honduras pretty much throughout its history. Uh, they weren't stalled by revolutions like they were in Nicaragua. Uh, and Again, as in, is so often the case, uh, the big names in Honduran tobacco came there from Cuba after the revolution, and they include some names that you're likely to have heard before, like the Placencia family. Uh, Nestor Placencia is, a, is such a, an enormous grower of tobacco right. that he actually grows in his various plantations more tobacco than the entire country of Cuba. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, another fa uh, famous family that's uh, been growing tobacco in, in Honduras for a long time and making cigars is the Iroa family. And the Iroas are, in fact, the people who created the uh, Camacho brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are also the family that first brought Corojo seeds out of Cuba right. into Honduras. And they still have what's called the only genuine first generation Corojo right. on the market today. Right. Some other people you might have heard of that were big in the foundation of Honduras as a, as a cigar country, uh, Frank uh, Leneza and uh, Stilo Padron from Villazon and Rolando Reyes from uh, Puros Indios. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Wow. That's all right. That's, that's the first time that's ever happened. Uh, well, you're entitled to us at your age a senior moment. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, I, one of the things I... Rob and I, years ago, were, we went to Honduras, and one of the things I thought was the most unusual is I expected it to be like iron, like plush and green, and yeah. everything. It was, yeah. it was like a desert. It was. It was very it was barren. I was. It, it, I don't know if this was because we were there in February. Well, yeah, well, yeah that has a lot season. to do with it. Yeah, you weren't, yeah. Yeah, you weren't, weren't there in the rainy season. There, were, yeah. there were fires everywhere. And yeah, it was a dry season. And the, the roads are... Well, there are no roads. Interesting. <laughs> there are no you roads. Know, when, interesting. When, when people compare the <laughs> industry of growing tobacco in Honduras versus Nicaragua. Uh -huh. They say there are two fundamental differences. Nicaragua had a revolution, but they have roads. Honduras didn't have a revolution, but they don't have roads. And they really have virtually no infrastructure of any kind there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, have, they have one uh, red light. In, yeah. in the yeah. middle one of the red light. In the middle, right, there's one red light. You're driving down the street, there's no cars, no nothing. You're driving, all of a sudden you have to stop because there's this one Stupid red light. And, and you're sitting there because there's no cross traffic. You're just sitting there waiting. One That's of, crazy. One of the greatest things, if you go to Honduras, there's one nice hotel in Danley. I mean, it's not nice, but it's nice. Right. Com compared, compared to whatever else yeah, you're going to find. Course. And they have, a, they have a little veranda. And out on that veranda, every afternoon, everybody in the cigar industry gathers together and they sit and sip rum and smoke cigars and share war stories going back to the boom and before and you can learn so much about cigars and about the business by just sitting on that veranda with these guys and shooting the breeze 
it's really fantastic. I just have to say before you keep going that Honduran tobacco is my favorite tobacco. Is it it is my favorite. Very My favorite. That is interesting. Do you have a cool Why is that? I, I love the taste of it. Maybe because it has, does most Honduran have sweet tobacco or is it? It tends not to be quite as sweet as uh, Yalapa tobacco mm -hmm. from Nicaragua, Nicaragua. but Yalapa is right on the border with Honduras, and, and just over the border is one of the areas where they grow a lot of their tobacco. What were you going to say, Scott? Something um, smart. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, it was very intelligent. No, they have these uh, lizards. What the hell are they? Iguanas. Iguanas, Iguanas. Yeah, yeah. Like, like squirrels we have yeah, here. Like, yeah, like yeah. squirrels. They're everywhere. I just thought that was fascinating. It is very funny. They're also yeah, tasty. They actually are squirrels in disguise. <laughs> they, yeah, they must they're, be. they're green, scaly squirrels, and they taste really good. If um, yeah, they, they sure do they taste do. well. And you need a lot of them to make a meal, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, some of them are so big are enough that they're as big as this table. Yeah. Are you yeah. serious? I've oh, seen yeah. one big as this table, yeah. yeah. They're more like the Gila monsters. Yeah. <laughs> were you guys scared? Yeah, no, they I were was. scared. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wasn't. He, he, he jumped into my arms. What are you kidding? What are you kidding? No, if you're in, if you're in Honduras, <laughs> the things to be scared of are not the not iguanas. Yeah. They're more likely to be the people. Yeah. Some of the people. Yeah. Um, there is also a whole new growing area in Honduras that was pioneered by a, an old Cuban family named Endemano. Uh, the area where they grow is way, way east. It's on the border with Nicaragua, but it's way east of everywhere else that they grow tobacco. And uh, it, the town is called Trojes, and the Endemano family has been breeding and creating new tobaccos there, uh, breeds, crossbreeds, and, and hybrids that have never been seen before for about 12 years now. And uh, not only do they grow those tobaccos, but they also have their own factory and a, an enormous leaf processing business back in Dan Lee and they make some phenomenal cigars. In fact, their factory, uh, Raices Cubanos, mm -hmm. uh, makes many of the uh, best Alec Bradley uh, brands, right. uh, yeah. including the new Raices Cubanos brand, which uh, I was actually witness to the initial blending of 10 years ago with uh, Romay and Damano, who's the, the old man of the family. Ago. He started blending wow. that cigar 10 years ago. Wow. So that's it for Honduras. For that's it for Honduras. Yeah, airport. Okay, that's easy. <laughs> what about the airport? The, airport? Well, it's the scariest uh, airport, airport I've ever landed in. Is it little? Tegucigalpa? Tegucigalpa. Ah, it's close. Obviously, I'm trying to say that three times like fast. No. This is the or worst Mexico place City. ever to land in. It's crazy. It's, it's all between mountains, oh, yeah. and you basically have to land vertically. Yeah, it's like yeah. like Tahoe, like Tahoe, and the, like the Tahoe and are about like a, a, what three or four feet over the yeah, above the, the above roofs the of houses. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. I will also tell you that while of most the of down. the people of Honduras are lovely, lovely people, when you go to the airport and you land in in what they call Tagus. Uh, what everyone will tell you is get out of the city as fast Imagine as you can. can it's yeah. borderline the most dangerous city on earth. Oh, yeah. no. oh great. I, I think actually think someone from, Hon from Honduras. Speaking of dangerous Hondor. cities, I think it's time to review our Camacho Carajo. Oh, it is. Is Mystery Smoker? Well, I didn't get that one. Well, if you take a look at the Camacho Corojo, it's, it's got a rich, dark brown wrapper, which is a classic Corojo wrapper. And basically, it was originally developed by... Um, the Camacho, the people that uh, that had Your Camacho, family. the Rojo family, Christian, so, yeah. and, and that's them. Dead. It's very good. It's got a, a beautiful design. It's a beautiful constructed cigar. It uh, and it, it smokes wonderfully. Um, you know, and I find about a third of the way into the cigar, it really, really changes and really gets real nice and rich and delicious. Miss Tia, well, I didn't get to get that far, but um, this is a great cigar. Again, it's Honduran, so I love it. I mean, I think if a lot of tobacco, I mean, cigars that are made with Honduran are great. Um, Hoyo de Monterrey, stuff like that. So I love those cigars. Um, this is a great cigar. I love the band. Yeah, you knew that was coming. Yeah. And it has a little scorpion. I think it's it's just it's just a great cigar. It's a really good cigar. Scott, um, I I used to really like the Camacho um, back when you know uh, I didn't. when we when we actually visited. Um, I, it was one of my favorite cigars. In fact, the 1118 Diploma w was my favorite cigar mm -hmm. at the time. Um, I th th thought it changed over time. Um, and now that they have re-blended these and repackaged them, they're just fantastic. 
Um, I get a lot of the flavors we described. Uh, I, when I first, before I lit it, I got, definitely got that sweet tobacco. I mean, that was, yeah. that was obvious. It was very evident. Um, the nutmeg um, and the hints of uh, chocolate, I definitely get. Um, this is a really, really nice cigar. They did a fantastic job of redoing everything. They did. Paul, first class work, a delicious, mm -hmm. delicious cigar. Rob? I agree with, uh, with Paul and Scott and Miss Tia. Thank you. This is a fantastic cigar. I was never really um, a Camacho fan. Uh, even when I went there, uh, when Scott and I were there, I wasn't, I liked them, they were okay, but ever since they re-blended this cigar, it is absolutely fantastic. I so. think it's a lot smoother and it's it not. Is. It is. It's, What's it's, the body on this? It's not as earthy this? tasting. It's got a lot more, it's got a, a, a lot more sweetness to it. Yeah. What's the body really like it. Yeah. I think it's, it's more refined. It was a little rough yes. right. in exactly. its earlier versions right. and that's it's, all gone. But I don't get the medium gone. to full. I get a nice medium in this. It's very, it's very, very maybe so smooth. smooth. Mm -hmm. yeah. As it's usual, so smooth. I can't really add much to this. I you mean, realize. right out of the box, you can smoke these. You don't have to age them. It's a great cigar and ergo, let's get our ratings. Solid four and a half. Watch this. 4.75. Wow. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I'll, give it a, I'll go with our mystery smoke with a four and a half. Paul? I'm a four eight on this one. Ooh. Wow. Well, wow. I would agree with T. Uh, four seven five. This is my lucky day. It's your lucky know. day. <laughs> I, give, I give it a 4.75 as well, which gives it a 4.71 and a third. Thank you, <laughs> Paul. Paul. And a, and a, Who's the third? <laughs> well, uh, upcoming next week, we're going to be reviewing the... Uh, Partagas Black Label. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Black I even label. have a lighter, Partagas lighter. Check that out. Gorgeous. Go and ahead. we may be able to show you one of the boxes, the huge chest of the Partagas 150s, talking about Partagas. Yeah. That might be a good time to have it side by side with the regular Partagas. Yeah. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Works for me. Uh, nice. Sounds good to me. And again, I want to thank all of you for watching. We're not quite ready to leave yet, but we want to encourage you to go to our website, which is cccigars.com. That's double C, cigars.com. And please leave your comments, criticism, anything we can do to make your experience watching our show more enjoyable. If you have any questions, uh, also ask us any questions. We'll feature uh, on the we'll show. Feature on the show. Mm -hmm. We might be able to get you a Cigar Cigars t-shirt or something like that. Maybe or a mug. Give or, them a something. mug. Or a mug. Ooh. A mug. Ooh, a mug. Yeah, a mug. Nice. You know, a genuine also, cigar, cigar is mug. Yeah. Everything tastes better. If you gotta love it. it. <laughs> you gotta love and it. smoke and one of the cigars with, our, while you're quickly, doing it. Quickly, we also have um, we have a, a, our own YouTube channel, which is if you go to YouTube, it's Cigar Cigars. You can see these repeats of these shows and cigar reviews. Yeah. You can get that off the website, right? Absolutely. Which is again. CCCigars.com. That's double C, C cigars.com. Cigars. I think the mystery smoker likes saying that's double C. <laughs> <laughs> he does. You see his he, face light up when he's like, oh. He definitely has a voice for television. Yes, he does. And a face. Oh. That's why they're home. <laughs> well, again, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again next Tuesday night at 7 30. No switching the channel. And on behalf of all of us, I'll say good night and let the panel say goodnight to you, too. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for watching, Dad. So long. Smoke often and smoke happy. Ciao for now, everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See that right now. Right. Somebody yeah. Would, somebody would come in and they would buy all of them. The whole box. Yeah. In a day. Yeah. That's true. I, th I think some cigars are rare because I think they create them to be rare. I was going to say that. I was going to ask you that. I think part of it is part of it is marketing. Mm -hmm. um, but the Opus X would be a good example of that. Yeah. Uh, it is. Yeah. The, well, well no, the, the Anejo is, is rare for a different yeah. reason. Right. Yeah. Right. But Still. and it has to do with a lot of tobaccos. I mean, they don't have an awful lot of the certain quality of tobacco, so they they can only make X amount of cigars. That's true. And sometimes it has to do with the way they make the cigar, and the Anejo is actually a good example of that. In that that tobacco has to be aged in oak barrels for a long time mm -hmm. before they make the finished cigar. How long? Uh, I want to say seven years. Wow. Yeah. And you just don't have that much tobacco mm -hmm. at any given moment that's been sitting in a barrel for seven years. Well, well, I, could, I got a question about that. When we were talking about aging tobacco, it, didn't you say they were daily or weekly? Do you had to rotate them because they would overage or they get warm and they have to stop the process? That's and start fermentation. Yeah. That's not aging. 
well, those are two different things. So what do they, when they age it, what do they do different? Keep it at a cooler temperature so they it doesn't do keep heat it up? They cooler. They don't let it heat up. They don't add humidity to it to keep that process going. So when you're just aging the tobacco, you want it to be stable. You just want it to have time to develop. And if it develops in the presence of certain other flavors like oak, or and in their case, I believe they're cognac, they're cognac barrels? Sherry. So I thought it was sherry. Sherry barrels. Uh, even though sherry it doesn't cast. get tasted, it doesn't get the flavor of the sherry, it interacts. Welcome back to Cigar Time, your Tuesday night show everything to do with cigars. And we have a wonderful panel assembled. Kind of looks like the same crew from last week. Yeah. I think we are. I'm even wearing the same underwear. Right? <laughs> same hat. That's a little too much information. We have our... We <laughs> it's have a lot to, too much. To my left, that you cannot see, but unfortunately we can, we have our mystery smoker. To my right, we have Rob. Hi, everybody. To his right, we have uh, Paul. Hello. He's going to be in the factory today, or in a, some country, I'm not sure country. where. To his He's right, we have Scott. Hello. To his right, we have the lovely Miss T. Hi. And uh, today for our first cigar, we're smoking the Eduardo Edition Especial. This is That's one correct. of our series of Eduardo cigars, and uh, my esteemed colleague, Rob, will tell you all about it. This is a Dominican Puro. It has a Dominican filler, binder, and wrapper. Very smooth cigar. It's the one that has the black and silver bands on right it. right here. Black and, nice and black and silver. Black and silver. Black and silver. Here's the black and silver bands. Yeah. Okay. And uh, our, uh, well, let's get some comments about this cigar. Mystery Smoker, start it out. Well, I think this is the mildest of the Eduardo blends. It's a very good. It's got, it's got a nice, smooth flavor. It's, it's a little uh, sweet. And it's a very good, mild, beginning of the day cigar. I, I like this cigar. I'm almost afraid to ask. Oh, no, I like this cigar. Oh, I agree with you. Wow. wow. No, it has a really nice taste, maybe because it is a Dominican Puro. I'm not sure. Um, I agree with everything the Mystery Smoker said. It's a good cigar. Love the band. Very <laughs> nice. Dominican is not known for its wrappers. but uh, this is Especially a, Connecticut. Right, especially Connecticut yeah. wrappers. But this one's very good. Yeah, it has, a lot, it has a lot of taste to it. I like it. It does. It's a great cigar. When you filter in... The fact that it's four dollars and fifty cents, it's a Absolutely. wonderful cigar. So let's rate it, shall we, Mystery Man? I give it a four and a half. Miss T. Four and a half. I give it a four. Four. Uh, four and a half, absolutely. I give it a four and a half, which makes it a four three seven five. Wow. Nice. 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 Four fifty. Four dollars and fifty cents, sports fan. Do we make it's these in Gordos? Except New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. The wedding yeah. store doesn't have any of these. Well, just we'll just sure got to point the, that out to it's you. It's hard to keep certain sizes in stock. <laughs> these things sell so darn fast. I didn't want to say damn, so I said Okay. Darn. You said damn. Oh, I did? Oops. Okay. <laughs> Somebody did. I think uh, it's time for us to uh, introduce our first second cigar. cigar. Do we really oh, have to put this one out, though? Second cigar. I know. I know. Strange. I don't even want... No, no, no. We do want the Camacho. Okay, forget yeah. it. Yeah. All right. The lovely well, Miss... Teresa will bring around our Camacho Corojo. Yes, our, fir our second cigar is a Camacho Corojo. Thank you. We'll take a few more puffs. And it has a, it's a Honduran Puro with a Corojo wrapper. The sizes are a Bellicoso, Churchill, Corona, Gordo, Robusto, and a Toro. The flavor Thank profile you. is sweet tobacco, nutmeg, and hints of raisinette and chocolate. No now, goobers? Ooh. Goobers. No goobers? To I go with the raisinettes. You, what does the um, sweet tobacco mean? Well, there, there are breeds of tobacco that are very sweet, mm. and they give off a sweet taste, but it's not like a sugared taste. It's okay. like a tobacco taste mm. that's sweet. It's almost like chewing tobacco sweet. Look at yeah. this bean. It covered, now, this is something you got to take off. Look how big and, Well, and unless you only want to smoke it. I know, right? you got to take this. It's a beautiful band. They it is. This whole, the this line, whole line, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. Mm. Yeah, even the box is beautiful. The box is case. very What's nice. What's the scorpion for? That's their new logo. Oh. And they're common in that what part of the What was their other one? Wasn't it like a bullhorn yeah, or something? They are. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't their old one a bullhorn? Their old a bullhorn. No. The the their logo wasn't always scorpion, was no. it? No, only since they rebranded oh. and repackaged the whole line. This company is owned by Davidoff now. That is correct. Let me taste this. So, what's our first topic? 
I'm lighting my cigar. Don't oh, be sorry. bothering me with topics. I'm topic sorry. Got air. My God. What's the topic for today? Yeah. Well, I think we should discuss because um, we've never really discussed this. Why are certain cigars very rare and very difficult to get? And why do we limit them? And why do we limit them? We limit them so everybody can get one. I knew that answer. <laughs> That's all I know. No, no, no. Right kidding. on the ball there, too. <laughs> yeah. No, um, because don't they only make them certain times of the year? Isn't certain cigars, um, the way they make them, it's 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 rare. It's rare. Well, they don't have enough tobacco to yeah. make millions right. of them. Okay. Yeah. It's something they only make certain rewrites, like the, the Añejo, they only make, uh, well, they only just uh, distribute them one time a year, and you know, Opus X, they distribute four times a year, if you're lucky. Right. If you're lucky. Um, and yeah, we, we limit them, and I, I tell people, well, you know, why well, can I only get one of these? Because if I didn't limit them, they wouldn't be. The sexy band. Um, and the construction is good. It's a good, it's a good cigar. No, I just want to, I just want to stop there one second. Paul, would you please tell the lovely Miss Tia what kind of wrapper's on this? I don't know. It looks ah. like an Ecuadorian it's a Connecticut, it's a, yeah. which well, makes I mean. it's, a it's, a it's a Dominican Connecticut. Dominican Connecticut. No, it's, it's a Dominican, Dominican Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. It's a That's pure. rare. It's a Connecticut wrapper. Dominican Ecuadorian Connecticut. No. I don't know. It's <laughs> just something all. different. It just it's doesn't taste like a regular Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, okay, okay. I yeah. just wanted you to know you're smoking. You know, I don't like Connecticut, but I like. I know. I try. You see how it's different cigars have a different flavor. You know. Yep. You know. That's why there's vanilla and chocolate. Well, it's, okay. that, that makes I this a like very, un, the fact a that bit. it has a, a Dominican Connecticut wrapper yeah. makes very it unusual. very unusual. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, that makes sense because I, I get some unusual flavors, like flavors mm -hmm. you don't normally get on a cigar yeah. from this. Mm -hmm. I definitely get a, a aroma and some flavors of tea. Um, not this. <laughs> Uh, like a black You only tea. hear it here. Like oh, a black like tea. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, jump right out right. of that. Pico. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, also, some a little bit of hint of clove and uh, some spice at the beginning. It's uh, unusual flavor. Something I don't find in any other cigars. Really enjoyable. That's why we make them. I'm sweating now. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> black tea. By the way, oh, this, is made, this is made in our factory in uh, Santiago in the Dominican Republic. Paul? Yep. Uh, it is extremely mild, but it does have flavor, and it burns beautifully. Yeah, it does. Look at the ash. Mine's Rob? Ash. Um, I like the cigar. It's very good. I usually don't like uh, Dominican Puros. Uh, like Paul was saying, Dom 